True, true story, uh, I had a different talk pre prepared for today, and then I saw Tracy slide up come up, and I think there's like a mismatch between what was on Meetup and what was on her slide. So this is a totally different talk. Um, <laughs> So that's how prepared I am. I'm going to do one of two talks. I should, I should have just let Igor pick, actually. Um, all right. So this is a this is a talk on uh, RxJS by example with Angular. Um, so first question up is, what is RxJS? Uh, it really I mean, probably depends on how you use it. Uh, a lot of times I'll have people come up to me and tell me things like RxJS is hard, or really they say RxJS is really hard or impossible or you know whatever. Um, all the time, I, I hear this from people. Or the people, when they think of RxJS, that's just for streaming data, right? They don't, they don't think it's for anything else but streaming data, like, uh, yeah. It was probably Jay Phelps. Um, he's over there. Uh, RxJS is really great if you want to make a stock ticker or something. This has been said to me more than one time uh, on Twitter and other, and other venues. Yes, it is really great if you want to make a stock ticker. I do recommend RxJS for that use. Uh, what if I want to do something more com complex than a look-ahead search? Uh, Jeff Cross's beard actually tweeted this at me once, maybe. Um, he ran out, so. I'm over here. Oh, here you go. Beard's over here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, these are all, this is all true. Um, anyways, as I said, I'm Ben Lesh. I'm a software engineer at Google. Um, Formerly of Netflix, a lot of people still know me from Netflix. I am actually here now. I have a badge and everything to prove it. Um, I'm the RxJS project lead. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Ben Lesh. So uh, here's the evolution of things I've said about it, RxJS. Uh, what the hell is this? This is the first day I looked at it. Um, I thought it looked like, a, what is this, another low dash? Why do I need this? Uh, I've told people it's like promises, uh, but for more than one value. Uh, observables, observables are an async type. Uh, it's low dash for async is a very popular one, uh, or low dash for events. Observables, which are concurrency primitive, I tried that one for a little while. Still some kind of misnomers to that. Uh, what I've settled on is observables, which are just push-based sets. Um, so this is just a, just a quick blurb about this. I need to get this out there so people know. RxJS is often used to deal with asynchrony, but it is not an a it's not about an async type, okay? It's just used to deal with asynchrony frequently. Uh, common sources of asynchrony are things like this, DOM events, HTTP AJAX, WebSockets animations, service and events, those sorts of things. This is not an exhaustive list. Uh, it could be used for a variety of other things. Uh, but it's not just about asynchrony, it's about pushing values. So you can push a value through a function synchronously. So here are some thing, synchronous things you can deal with in RxJS, single values, which are often referred to as scalar observables. So this is just an observable of a thing. You subscribe to it, you get it right away. Uh, arrays, iterables, pretty much anything, just to, just to lay it out for you, anything you can pass to a function or get back from a function, you could, you could wrap that in an observable and subscribe to it. All right, now onto the talk. This talk is, I, I call it a 300 level talk because I'm not going to go into the basics of RxJS this time. I'm going to go into a little bit more in-depth stuff. Uh, so there will be a couple spots where I get a little hand wavy about what RxJS is actually doing. It's because I've explained this elsewhere, uh, but I do have links for those, like this one. Here's a link to an RxJS basics talk I did. I believe this one is one from Angular Connect uh, last year. So what we're going to be working on in this is, uh, or I'm going to be virtually working on in my slides, is a simple newsfeed app. All it does is it gets some data via AJAX and displays it. So it's like, you know, the almost like one step above hello world, I'm actually going to go get some data and put it on a page and list it out. And I want to add two features to it. I want, it. I want to add a feature to get the data on an interval. That's our first most basic feature we want to add. But then I want to add that, uh, that feature for the mobile pull down to refresh. Okay, so everyone's used like Twitter or something and they, they take their finger and they pull down from the top and if you don't pull down far enough and you let go, the little icon that you're pulling down animates back up. And if you pull down far enough, then it sits there and spins while it's loading and when the loading's done, it goes back up. And I've, I've chosen this very specifically because it involves animation, which ArxJS can do. It involves loading data, which ArxJS can do. It involves touch events or user events, which Arx, ArxJS can do. It involves a lot of these things. We have to coordinate a lot of them. So I'm going to get into that. So first off, here is my really super cool 
feed app. It uses the latest in browser styling. Um, lovely Times New Roman. It's one of the best fonts ever. So, and, and you can see what it's just got a title across the top. This is just a, it's just a straight up list. Uh, I'll show you the component in a minute. It's, it's pretty brain dead. So the basic app structure as it stands, we have a latest news component and a news feed service. Yeah, everyone sitting here that's, that's ever worked in an Angular, uh, Angular 2 Plus app probably already knows what the next bits are gonna look like. Here is the latest news component, uh, the actual class that goes with it. Um, what we have here is we've got a news property uh, that is, it's actually, hold on, let me, let me make sure I'm plugged in here. Um, We've got, a, uh, we've got a news property that's actually going and making a call to get our news or get our news observable from our news service. And uh, we're injecting our news service there in our constructor. Uh, here's the latest news template. Uh, all we're doing is we're piping out the, that news property with pipe async. So we're, we're binding it, subscribing to it and binding to it and getting the list of news out of that and looping over it with ng4 and displaying the data. Um, pretty pretty simple. Here's our news feed service. It has one method on it and it's going to give us an observable of an array of news objects. Uh, all it's going to do is use Angular's older now HTTP service and make a call to get a news feed and then convert that to JSON and it's got a little hand wavy error handling in here where we're saying oh an error occurred I'm just going to log it to console and, and do observable empty. I'm not actually doing any great error handling here. That's not what it talks about. So let's add our update interval feature. This is the first feature we wanted to add. It's the simplest to add, so let's go ahead and do that. And the way we try to add features with uh, reactive programming is to try to work backwards. So what I really want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to need to have something that triggers the, the update. So I have my, my news dollar sign property there that has, that has the data, that's an observable of the data that I'm displaying. So I want to update in that, some, that in some way so it's, it becomes a continuous uh, a feed of news. So I'm going to add this other property called update news triggers that is just going to be an observable that every time it admit, emits, it, we want it to trigger us to go get new news. So this is uh, where I'm using a uh, timer instead of interval here. So timer is zero and then 3,000. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna emit one at zero milliseconds right away, and then on an interval every three seconds afterwards. So it's a little different than interval uh, 3,000 in that it, it emits one right away because that's that first zero. Ah, I already covered that in the slide. So we now need to refactor our, our news property to use this. And in order to do that, all we really need to do is say this update news triggers and then switch map into what we had there previously. So we just take what we had there previously and wrap it uh, in, in a switch map and then feed, in, feed into that switch map from our update news triggers. And so what that should do is every time that interval ticks along or that timer ticks out, it's going to call that switch map and map to a brand new news feed observable and subscribe to it, make the Ajax call. When it comes back out, it gets flattened out via the, the switch part of the switch map and it should show up on our feed. So let's see if that, what that looks like. And if you watch, every three seconds or so, you'll see this tick through. Did I just drop somebody from my... <laughs> okay. So things to notice, you wanna to try to work your way backwards. Now it's not quite apparent in that because that was just kind of one step. Uh, but we didn't really need to touch our templates. I didn't touch our templates at all to add anything like that. And it was a very small refactor to one property to, to, uh, to get this one out. But it, that's, that's a pretty simple feature. Let's move on to the, the big nasty one, the pull down to reload. So this is not gonna be just, just one observable we're dealing with. We're gonna be dealing with a lot of different stuff. To talk about the feature again, we're looking at, um, I feel like I'm, I'm logged into something and it's, it's doing that myself. Um, we're looking at a, a variety of things here. So as the user touches and pulls down, uh, we wanna show a marker moving along with their finger, right? Uh, if they move far enough, we want to start the load, right? But if they don't move, if they if they don't move far enough and they let go, we want to animate back right away. When the loading is done, we want to animate back. Um, so there's a there's a variety of features that that we have to coordinate in here. 
Well, one thing I do know is I've talked about uh, implementing drag and drop many times as a basic example of something you can do with event coordination in ArxJS. So drag and drop is very similar to the whole touch and pull thing, where what we want to do is we want to take uh, touch start events, and every time a touch start event starts, we're going to switch map that into touch moves, and we're going to take touch movement events until touch end stops. So what the result of this will be uh, a, a stream of touch events that all come from touch moves, really. Okay, it's just kind of punctuated on either side by touch start and touch end. So I'm going to build a component. I'm going to call it the touch drag to load component because I couldn't think of a better name. <laughs> and uh, it's this is going to just control the behavior of the marker. Okay, and it, it's it's going to it's going to do the work of of triggering the reload or, or telling something to trigger the reload. Uh, but it also has to be notified of when the load is complete. Because if it's not notified of when the load is complete, then how will we know when to animate that marker back up? I'm also going to add this load notification service. So its whole job is just to kind of be like an event bus between our actual, our news feed component and this new touch drag to load component where it's going to uh, it, it can be notified when a load is requested and it's going to send that notification along to anybody who's listening and it's going to can be notified when a load is completed and it's going to send that that notification along to anyone that's that's listening so the basic architecture uh, is going to look like this we have our two components uh, where we've got our latest news component that actually uses our drag down to load component and then we have this load notification service that kind of sits between them to kind of communicate back and forth between them there's a variety of ways you could you could orchestrate this, but I'm doing it this way so I've got observables to work with, really. The first thing I'll show you is the load notification service. It is this simple. So the, the load notification service is, is just a service with two properties on it that are subjects. Now what subjects are, if for those of you not familiar, is they are observables that are also observers. So you can subscribe to any observable with a subject and anyone who subscribes to the subject will get anything that's been notified through its observer half. It's just, a, it can just pass through. And let's refactor our latest news component again. So this is back to our original component and we're gonna refactor this a little bit where we're gonna inject our load notification service and then we're going to use our request loads here. So basically every time a load is requested, this subject will emit, and we are gonna merge that with our update news triggers. And what that means is anytime our timer goes off or anytime request load goes off or emits a value, we're gonna, we're gonna trigger a, a, a load of uh, new news. And then also whenever, like right after the, the switch map in the, the, we're gonna add a do, and do is for a side effect. And what, what, what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna say, oh, whenever uh, we actually get news back, which is the next step after switch map, we want to notify this uh, load complete subject that we, we've actually got some. So we'll just pass that right, in, right into there. We, we don't really care what the value is, we just, wanna, we just wanna notify that direction. So we're just saying the load is done, we've got our news back. So our touch drag to load component looks like this. We've got a couple nested divs, this is for positioning purposes. And uh, we've got an SVG, so I'm gonna make like a little circle with another circle inside of it so we can see it spin. Um, we've got a couple things we're actually, we're actually binding out here. We've, we're using pipe async on this position translate 3D. Uh, what that's gonna, it's saying I got a low battery here. Is this not plugged in? No. Easily? Yeah, and if someone could plug this in somewhere, that would be good. We've got a plug, it's just not. It's not friendly. Do your thing, I'll keep talking. Um, all right, sorry about that. So the other thing we've got is we've got this rotate transforms, which we're also using pipe async on. And uh, it, it's, its whole job is it's an observable that as it emits different uh, numeric values or different, different transformations, rather it's a string, it's gonna update the style transform and do the rotation of our, of our SVG. <laughs> Hey, that tickles. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, a, this is our touch drag to lo load component class. We're just gonna stub it in. And, and what I mean by stub it in is the first thing I always do with, when I do this stuff is I, I've got 
I've already got those pipe asyncs in my uh, in my template, and you'll see I add the properties right away, and I just do an observable of whatever the happy path is. Like, in this case, it's an observable of translate 3D000, and observable of rotate zero degrees. Right, so this is just like a home like position for these things. So that way, this is, this is what I'm gonna start from, and I know that these things should end up being observables of this shape. I'm also gonna add my component, obviously, to my uh, newsfeed component. And let's have a look and see what it looks like. So if we use uh, Chrome's DevTools Tools mobile preview and we look at this, you'll see that, oh look, we've got it there and all we have is like a circle with a circle in it up top. It's not doing anything. Ben, you need to plug your computer in. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> the light's on, yay, I'm charging, all right. So this is one of those MacBook Airs that burns through like 1% of your battery every minute, so it's pretty great. Um, so let's start working our way backwards. So we have this thing. This is the end of the line. This is what we want to end up with. Uh, and we want, to, we want to get to something uh, where this is being updated dynamically. So first things first, I want to make sure the marker actually starts above our view. Like I don't want it to, I don't want it to always just be sitting there and waiting for someone to drag in there. That's kind of weird. Uh, so I'm going to move it. The marker I know is 70 pixels tall, so I'm going to move it that much. Uh, we're going to use our drag and drop pattern. So I've got to add my touch start, touch end, and touch moves in there. And this is exactly the same thing I showed before. Touch starts, and then you switch map that into touch moves, and you take that until the touch ends. So we, we, we know we want to use this. So I'm going to add that in there. Uh, and um, we want to actually take this and work it into positions so we can, we can get like a numeric position. And we're going to start that position with zero. But you see there's a little red squiggly down here. It's not quite happy. And it's not quite happy because touch moves is not giving us numbers, right? This is giving us touch events. That's not what we want. We need an observable of numbers so we can, we can uh, have that start with a number. And so all we need to do to do that is inside of our switch map, I'm going to, I'm going to have another map, or I'm going to have a map, and the map is going to say, uh, let's, let's do some math between our move Y position and our start Y position and just return the difference of those two things. So now we've got an observable of differences since you started touching and dragging and down. So now we should have something draggable if we look at this. You notice I still didn't change a template. It's pretty cool. The, the little skip you see where it's, it's changing value in the back. That's just our interval still ticking along that we, that we added earlier. It's not actually loading anything yet. So that's cool. Uh, let's make it animate home when we let go of it. That's the next kind of piece of this. So as soon as we let go, it should, it should get out of our way, even if it's not loading anything yet. Uh, I'm going to do some animations with this. The other talk that I thought I was going to do today was actually on, on animations, but I have it pre-recorded here for anyone that would like to watch that. So the, some of the, the animation stuff will get a little hand wavy. Uh, but you can find out more about it in this, yeah, this talk here. But uh, the basic rundown of this is I, I've added this RX animations um, service, and it has a tween, uh, it has a tween method on it. And what it's going to do is return a t an observable that's tweened between a start value and an end value over a duration. So you give it zero to ten and a duration of two seconds, and over the course of two seconds on an animation frame, it's gonna give you values between zero and 10 until it hits two seconds, and then it's at 10, and then it's done. <coughs> okay, that's, that's, that's the basics of how this works, and it's cool stuff, there's a whole other talk on that, maybe I'll do that at another uh, modern web meetup or, or Angular event. So let's get back to our code. So here's, here's where we were, and what we wanna do is when when someone's done dragging, so after the, the touch has en ended, at, the, at, the, at that point, what we want to do is we want to have that animation occur. So what we do to do that is we actually just concatenate our animation uh, observable onto the end. It's a standalone observable of numbers. So we're just saying we're going to take this until a certain point, and then we're going to concat that directly on the end. And, and as, soon as, we let, as soon as we let go on the touch end, it's going, to, it's going to let go. So as soon as there's a touch end that occurs, it's actually going to hit this concat. If for some reason uh, there's another switch map, so there's another touch start, which is physically impossible, I don't even know how you do that, this concat wouldn't get hit because it would still be 
it would be unsubscribed by that uh, switch map. But it's nothing you really need to worry about. It's just a fun fact, I guess. Uh, so we've got a, we've got another problem here, though. Is we need a we need a start position for our animation. So we need to know what position we are at in order to to start our animation to send it back to zero. So in order to do that, I'm going to have this uh, let uh, pos equal zero up here, and I'm just going to add a do block. So this is a side effect, and I'm just going to update pos with whatever the current position is that we've got so far, which is just our drag difference. So the other the other problem that we have here is um, right now. POS, so the moment that you concatenated, by the time it gets to that concatenated observable, that POS was actually defined at the same mo moment that this, this tween function is being called right now. Right? Can, see, can people see that? So it's got to call the tween function and return that observable to the concat function when you, when you call this entire, the entire body of the switch map. And so the problem is POS is always going to be zero at that point. So we need to, def we need to delay that by some. And the trick for that in RxJS is observable defer. Actually, the other talk uh, that, I, that, I, that I, on animations is uh, I, I mentioned defer a lot. Defer is a great trick for, for observables when you need to capture something at the moment of subscription. Uh, it's defer. So now, since it's deferred, it's actually going to wait to subscribe to that Rx animations. It's going to wait, and the, the position will be what you want it to be. So let's see and see if it does what we hope it's going to do. So you drag it down, you let go, ooh, it animates out. So fancy. <laughs> um, all right, so now let's get it to trigger the load if you pull down far enough. I think half the screen is more than far enough, so that's, that was kind of my arbitrary choice. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to use the do operator again, and we're going to say, look, if, if the position is more than, more than or equal to half the window height, uh, let's go ahead and signal that request load. So remember on the other side, we merged request load with our update triggers. Here we're going to send a signal on it. It doesn't, it's just we're sending undefined. It doesn't matter what we send as long as, as, long as we trigger it. So we're just saying, hey, if this thing ever gets past this point, uh, go ahead and signal a request to load. But we don't want to spam the load request. So really, we just, what we're going to do is we're going to say do this and then only take these while we're less than half the height also. So basically it's going to get there, it's going to send one, and then take while is going to say, oh, we're done with this whole observable, just stop it. And um, the problem with that is if, we're, if, we, if we do that with a take while, this is actually going to kill that whole observable, like our whole drag observable. The first time it happens, our drag behavior is no longer going to work anymore. So oh my gosh, we're going to have to go through and refactor this whole thing to make it work better. Yeah, probably not, because we're just going to add a repeat on the end. So now it'll just be like, oh, you're done? That's OK, I'll subscribe to you again. And that's, that's all repeat does. So now, it's, now it's, it's going to work forever. So let's see. Let's pull it down. Well, look at that. It loaded some data now. And it just kind of, yeah, it loads some data and just hangs out there. That, that skip you see is just from the animation looping, or the movie looping. So we need to. We need to get it to leave after it's done loading. So let's, let's add another property. We're going to call it complete animations. And this, is, this whole thing is just going to be there to control the, the uh, loading animations when it, when it leaves. So um, what we're doing is we're using our animations tween again. And we're just going to take it from the current position uh, to zero, whatever the current position may be. So, but we don't have a current position yet, right? Like, we need to get it from somewhere. Well, you remember the positions uh, property that we added earlier that has all our drags and we're, we're merging it with, uh, with a few other things. We're going to merge that with complete animations and we're going to start it with zero. Um, and guess what? We're actually going to use that to get our current position also. So, current position needs to come from somewhere. We're, we're, this is kind of mind bending, right? So we've got positions, we're updating it. I'm just jumping back a slide. We've got positions, we're updating it with our complete animations positions. Um, but we also need to use positions in our complete animations uh, observable. So here's what we do. 
We say this dot positions, and we're gonna we're gonna switch map that into our animations, right? But you see, there's a red squiggly underneath that. It doesn't like that, uh, and it doesn't like that because we can't really use uh, positions yet. We can't say this dot positions yet in complete animations because it's not available there. So guess what we're gonna use? Our old friend observable defer again. It'll definitely exist by the time, by the time our component mounts. It's, it's well, well into where our component's already alive and it's got all the observables on it and it's, it's ready to, to, uh, to subscribe to all these observables. There's, there's DOM in existence and all these other things. So we're gonna use observable defer and just wrap the same thing and now uh, this dot positions is totally happy. So this, this is gonna give us, whatever our current position is, we're gonna get updated to current position and then that's going to, uh, it's gonna start our animations back to zero. Uh, but that's not still not exactly what we want. So we, we, don't, we don't want that animation to fire every time we update positions. One, it'll loop back on itself, that's not cool. So what do we do? Well, we need to trigger it from something. Remember load completes? This is, where, this is where our news service is notifying us that, hey, I'm done loading the news. Uh, you, you can go ahead and animate back to where you, you came from. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say every time load completes fires, we're gonna use the latest value from this dot positions and switch map that, excuse me, I'm gonna go back, and switch map that into our animation. So again, just, just so you can follow this again, every time uh, load notifications fires, we're gonna get the latest value from positions and use that to animate back to zero. So there we go, we've got it. So it, it, we pull it down and it loads and as soon as the load's complete, it animates back. So this is pretty good. Now we gotta make it spin. It's the only way it's cool if it, if it also spins. <laughs> So let's start, let's start working at our rotate transform. So we, we, we have that already there and it's just this observable of rotate zero degrees. Um, we wanna work with numbers, so we're gonna factor this out into rotates of observable of zero. Still exactly the same thing. Everyone can see how we're just kinda of working our way backwards. And now we need to make rotates update in a dynamic way. We know that we want it to rotate 360 degrees, right? And I'm gonna make it do it over half of a second. So this animation was only gonna play once, and we want it to keep going forever, so what do we do? Yay, it's something like you guys are learning already. <laughs> All right, so repeat. So let's try that out, see what it looks like. Now look, it's so spinny, it's just spinning all the time now. Okay, so we, want, we only want that to do while we're, we're loading, so that's, that's good. All right. So we can start the rotation when request load fires. Right, so that's, this is when we're, we're triggering the load event. Remember we were triggering that when we pulled down more than halfway. So whenever, whenever request load fires, we're actually gonna switch map into this spinny animation. And we wanna take it until the load completes. Right, as soon as the load's complete, we don't want it to spin anymore, we just stop it with, it with a take until. And last little finishing touch is you don't want it to stop at some weird cockeyed angle. You'd like it to go back to zero. So we'll just concatenate observable of zero. So it'll kind of get there and it'll just jump back to where it's a zero if you, if you like. If you want to get really crazy with this, you can duplicate all the work and have it animate back to zero if you really want, I guess. All right, so let's see, let's see how we're doing now. Pull it down. Oh, we're loading. It's done. That's it. We, we, did, we added our whole feature to the app. So the, the, uh, the moral of the story here is you start simple. Just stub, stub in the simplest possible thing to make your view work, all right? With observable of whatever this thing is. And then you know, work backwards piece by piece. If, if part of your thing is to make it spin, then just get it spinning and then figure out, okay, well now how do I need to start and stop this? And figure out what, what events you're depending on and kind of work your way backwards from that. Again, work backwards. I've said this multiple times, work backwards. Start with the simplest possible thing. Uh, figure out what your what your various uh, events that you are that you need to coordinate are, and, and work backwards. Observable defer. Do not forget about observable defer. 
so often people will be like, oh my gosh, Ben, I need to get a timestamp of when this observable started and how do I do it? Every time I get a timestamp, I don't know if the observable's actually started or not. Wrap it in an observable defer, get your timestamp inside of that function, return the observable that you want. Um, observable defer is a very, very powerful tool that gets overlooked because people think to, my, to themselves like, oh, wait, this is, um, what happened? Did I die? Did I kick something? The end. <laughs>